And I got the alert and I clicked on the link and I was expecting Josh Whitman to kind of have this rallying cry around the postseason, talking about, you know, what this could mean at, compared to last year at this time when sports stopped, right? Like, I thought it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be, you know, something that maybe acknowledged that they weren't Big Ten champions, but hey, you're Big Ten champions in our mind. Uh, no, we got something completely different. And I will say pretty rare for Josh Whitman uh, to be so blunt and critical of his own league uh, in this open letter. And I want to go over some of it, Joey, but even today I'm sitting here like, wow, uh, Josh Whitman's open letter saying that they deserve to be big 10 champions and that they feel slighted and that he feels the big 10 is not doing the right thing here. I'm still pretty surprised. You know, I saw, I also have his alerts on my phone and I saw it and I had a tweet deck pulled up and I saw like the tease into it. And it was like, you know, less message to the everyday guys or something. And I thought the same thing. I thought, okay, tournament's back. How proud we are of this team to have made it. Cause that's, I mean, Josh has done that before. And, and you know, he doesn't write open letters very often. I remember one other time, I think it was in the summer with the, uh, the uh, when the social injustice movements were, were much more the, the center of our discussions. And, and I opened it and I went back to writing something else. I thought, well, this isn't, you know, okay, Josh is happy for his team. And then I thought, well, okay, let's see what this is. And I was like, whoa, just because he doesn't do that. He, he's so measured in everything. He's, even when like in a Zoom press conference, which is what we've done or in a real press conference, he, he takes just a, he, he's so smart. It doesn't take him very long to like come up with what he wants to say, but he usually pauses to make sure he's putting everything in the right words and, and exactly how he wants it. And we've not seen this side of him. And he did the same for this. It was the same, you know, I'm assuming it was the same build up to this letter, but it was just a different outcome than I expected. And I'm just, I'm still like you, I'm still pretty shocked that he did it and that he said that. And I, I do think, Jeremy, that it was needed. I, I think that there is so much noise around this discussion. And, and we talked about it after the Ohio State game. Had Michigan won? Yeah, we were just ready for Indy, right? Like th this discussion probably doesn't happen. Obviously it didn't play out that way. And I thought someone needed to say something and maybe poor Brad was the one we talked to and the players, they probably thought, oh my gosh, okay, we're frustrated, but so I, I thought it was needed. I just didn't think it was expected and maybe not expected, at least in that tone. It's an emotion we don't see a lot out of, as you said, a measured guy. And there's anger. There, there's anger and disappointment here. Uh, we've seen disappointment at times from Josh, but th there's, there's anger and frustration here, which uh, I think he doesn't take lightly because I, I keep using that word calculate. He's a very calculated guy. and He is a phenomenally gifted writer. Um, and he does not say things unless he thinks they are needed to be said and until he is ready to say them. So I want to go over some some highlights of this letter that everyone's read, but things that stuck out to me, Joey. And the first thing that stuck out to me is he's had discussions with the Big Ten about this for several weeks, he said. And then he goes on to say, despite our university's best efforts to achieve an equitable outcome that fairly recognizes the performance of our men's basketball team, we know now that nothing will change. He complains that, you know, this is an apples to oranges comparison between Michigan that played 17 games, won 14 of them, had the best win percentage in Illinois that wins 20 or it plays 20 and wins 16. So I think he, he makes a, a, a real good argument throughout this about why Illinois should get a share of it. I think it's great that he said, to be clear, we have not endeavored to take anything away from Michigan. They earned their title. And we are not looking to diminish their accomplishments. He, he cites past years, including last year, where there's three co-champions. And I think, you know, the Michigan reaction is, ah, stop whining. You didn't win it. it but it's, it's not that we're trying to take your title away from you. And I think Illinois fans somewhat are misdirecting their anger at Michigan. Now, if Michigan, if you feel they game the system here, okay. But that's a Big Ten problem, in my opinion. But Josh does acknowledge, and this is where my frustration is, Joey. He acknowledges that in November, they decided that win percentage would determine the regular conference champion. And before the season, I thought that was the cleanest way to do it. Now, you get through a season, and Michigan plays two fewer games than every other team. They end up winning it. 
they go on a pause themselves, right? And decide when to come back and not to make up certain games. We didn't hear this from the Big Ten. We never heard from the start, Kevin Warren or just some Big Ten, you know, uh, assistant assistant, uh, that's saying, hey, this is the rule. This is how it's going to be. We know it could be ugly. Um, This is what it is. We had to see Brendan Quinn of The Athletic, who's a great reporter, tweet uh, right about that. The AP confirmed it. And then the Big Ten at the end of this, the season just said, Michigan's the outright champion. And they don't explain why. The communication from the Big Ten – has been so bad. It's put Michigan in a bad spot. It's put Illinois in a bad spot. And the biggest takeaway from all of this, and we'll dive more into this, Joey, is that Josh Whitman is not the first AD or coach to really publicly voice displeasure about Big Ten leadership and decisions over the past year. And I understand it's a pandemic. None of this was going to be clean. This is a bad year to be a first year as a commissioner. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like communication is very smooth or it's very healthy right now. And that's why we sit there and think Jim Phillips had the relationships here. He was an AD with all these other people. And this would have been a little bit smoother because it just feels like there's a big disconnect in that grand scheme things take outside of Illinois. That's my biggest takeaway from this all is one of the most measured ADs and a guy that maybe in 20 years could be the big time commissioner is voicing this displeasure. And it said he has a breaking point to me. That's the big picture story here is the big time communication and the leadership and the, and the discord is something new in this conference. Yeah, I will say this is a really challenging year to be a first year, but you can make anything more smooth with proper communication. It might not be favor. People might not like it. People might be very, very upset with you. But if you put all of your cards on the table, you're going to win at least some favors with people understanding your line of thinking. That's where some of this comes in. And, you know, I want to go back like in December. Yeah, it was win percent, right? Or uh, November, rather, it was win percent. And then I'm thinking, what did we expect the season to be in November? If you would have told me in November, most teams would have played 19 or the full 20 games. I'm going to be honest, Jeremy, I probably would have laughed in your face. We didn't know what was ahead of us in November and what this was going to look like, especially when we saw what happened with football. And then we took rosters much smaller than that, where contact tracing, as we've seen in some other programs, can leave you no choice but to wipe away two weeks at a time. So that did seem right. But like, and I know people have pointed to the football argument and said, well, they adjusted in football. They came out with these rules and they adjusted. They did. And maybe there should have been some level of adjustment, especially as Josh said, as they've seen this coming, this was on the horizon for weeks. There was plenty of time to have the requisite discussions. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in those zoom meetings to understand. Kidding. No, go ahead. Yeah. Can I interject? Like I thought the Ohio state decision, well, every other fan base thought it was, uh, you're favoring Ohio state. That was the right decision. In my opinion, that was the right decision based on what we knew at that point. It's like Ohio state had two games, I believe canceled that weren't their fault. One that was their fault with Illinois. Right. But they had two games that were canceled that weren't their fault. They were clearly the best team. They beat the team who was closest to them in Indiana. Right. Like, so you're not going to allow that team to play in the big 10 championship. You're not going to allow that team. Like that made logical sense to me. Right. Like, so I, I applauded while a lot of people were criticized. I I applauded that decision. Um, It's just like, and you know, the whole getting back to play, I can understand why they made some of these decisions, but like you're leaving so many people in the dark, including your coaches and ADs throughout this process. And then you're just not being upfront about it. Hey, this might not be a popular decision, but this decision we feel is in the best interest of our student athletes right now. He goes on big 10 network, Kevin Warren, and does a, a, a weird interview. Uh, but he doesn't do really much else other than like the athletic one. And I think ESPN, but it was like, do a press conference, like do an actual, answer the questions. People aren't going to like every answer, but at least you're telling them uh, what is going on. And that's what we haven't had with basketball. And why, when you did that with football, you made that adjustment. Why won't you make it in basketball as well when it hurts no one? Right. And again, if you're not going to make it, and I'm sure there, look, 
you have all these incredibly intelligent people in a Zoom meeting discussing this. There exists a logical reason in their mind to not make this adjustment. Explain that reason. Yeah. I mean, there's just such intelligent people. These have obviously been thought out conversations for weeks. It makes enough sense to a group of people to not make the adjustment. So just explain it. Yeah. Explain why it is and let people be angry from there. But now and you can come out and say, you can come out and say, Josh Whitman and Brad Underwood knew what our rule was, right? They, they knew what our rule was. So for them to complain about now, I'm sorry, but this is what we agreed to, including Josh Whitman, right? Like you, you can come out and say that, like, at least you'll give an answer. We're not even, we're not told anything. And I think, you know, Josh must not like the response he got from the big 10 or even like, I don't know. I don't want to read too much into it, but the frustration he has, it seems like he didn't have much of an open, like there wasn't much of an openness to even listening to this argument. Well, and you know, he said breaking point. We've covered Josh. It's just my fourth year covering Josh. You've covered him for, since he got hired about four, yeah, four or five years. This doesn't just happen. Like this isn't like, Oh boy, Josh is frustrated. Get ready for this open letter because that's what Josh does. Not what Josh does. That's not at all. And it also, I, again, I don't want to read into it that much either, but I do wonder if this didn't just happen in a bubble. If there was frustration that had been built from August that got to this point, from Michigan State that got to this point. Here's the paragraph. Here's the paragraph that really stands out, right? As a general manner, I favor diplomacy. I prefer discreet private conversations held with appropriate parties behind the scenes. And I've not hesitated to engage on these and other issues as these situations mounted those conversations intensified, but everybody has a breaking point. Mine was yesterday. Um, and he talked about this with football. You could tell with some of the things that were decided with football, he wasn't in complete agreement with, but when they were decided to come back, like he was like, Hey, that's behind us. We're all in the conference together. And Brad has tried to say that stuff as well. Like, hey, we're, we're a good member of the Big Ten, but it's clear they feel like it's not equitable or it's just not, you know, harmonious right now. Yeah, and that, that kind of, as you zoom back in a little bit, Michigan is really just in the crosshairs of people's frustrations with the Big Ten. I mean, look, I understand people are mad about that initial Illinois game. The reality was, didn't change the outcome of what people in Illinois thought the game was going to be. Illinois still won the darn basketball game, but Michigan, again, they're just kind of, they just showed up to dinner and saw people arguing at a table and and like, yes, you can make, you know, the pause, whatever, but this is definitely an institution. And and look, I'm sure Josh isn't the only one. He's probably the only one frustrated with this specific conversation but as we've seen, you know, it appears there's a lot more people frustrated with leadership above them. And yeah. that is just kind of all here. And then behind all of that, behind the curtain is this team that really has a justified reason to think they should be able to hang a banner for winning the, the or at least co Big Ten champions. And I'm not saying that argument doesn't play into what Josh wrote yesterday, but I, I think Michigan's just kind of along for the ride in this argument. This, this is so much more than just that i think yeah uh and i think the difference i guess between ohio state football and illinois basketball is illinois is still number three in the country they're still number one you know in in the bracketology so they're likely still going to get a one like the big 10 championship has no impact on that while big 10 championship game appearance for ohio state might have been the difference i don't know if it would have been but playing an extra game for them, I think, helped them. And, and, you know, winning the Big Ten Championship helped them solidify the uh, college football playoffs. So there's not that ramification. Um, but Josh does make the case, and I think there's a real case for Illinois about why they should be co-champions, right? He said, we did not anticipate that the winning percentage, um, you know, marker would penalize a team. And in this case, Illinois. And he said, as a result, for the first time in my memory, the team that has won the most games is not recognized with an even share of the conference championship. That defies logic. That's a strong, strong sentence there. It stands counter to the very foundations of competition and sport for a marquee conference that just concluded arguably the greatest, most competitive season in the history of college basketball. This is an unfortunate and disappointing outcome. This entire situation was avoidable that that's scathing yeah. I mean, in, in in josh's way 
that's pretty scathing of the Big Ten. It is. And again, that's part of why I'm so surprised because that's just not what we've seen out of Josh Whitman. And I get it, right? I, I, I get, you know, you, what a conference championship means to a basketball program. I understand that. I understand you bring in a recruit, you can point up to a banner and say, this was this, you, these, these guys, this group of guys will be able to come back in 10 years and say, this was our big 10 conference. I, I get all of that. I, I do. And I understand that there's some financial ramifications for Brad though. I mean, if Josh pins this, it's kind of backed himself into a wall yeah. a little bit with what he's got to do with that. I think there will be a bonus and a raise at the end of this year for Brad. Right. Brad. right. But like you said, this, this isn't like the season's over. Right. And I think that's what maybe some people, some other people are balancing that this juggling act of like, Hey, but there's more like, this isn't the end of this. And it's just, it's such a weird bubble to be in with this. Right. Like I, I get their arguments. The other part of it's like, I can understand why in some other regions of the country nationally, people are like, okay, what? I, I get all of that. It's, it's strange. Can I, share, can, I, can I share something? Like I, I talked to some people um, that have a different perspective than maybe us in this Illinois bubble uh, that this beat that covers it every day. And, you know, the, the phrase specifically, this is a decision that will resonate with our program for generations. And that's some eye rolls. And, and some people are like, why is, why is Whitman doing, why is he focused on this? And I can, you know, I, I kind of explain something I will in a second, that kind of puts us in perspective for, for Illinois. Um, but a lot of people say, why make this and continue to make this a bigger thing going into a big 10 tournament or going into the NCAA tournament when that's what people remember, right? Is did you make a final four and are you going to distract your team from this? I think Whitman did this knowing it won't. I think Whitman did this knowing his team and his coach play better with a chip on their shoulder to feel like they're the underdog, right? And he even says that every time we are slighted, right? <laughs> Which Illinois is number three in the country and in a final four, like pick for everybody. Every time we are slighted, we are disrespected. Use each instance as an excuse to sharpen your ax. And when we accomplish our goals, we'll use that razor sharp ax to cut down the nets. He's a good writer. Okay. But like, I mean, I don't think Illinois is like really disrespected as much as, you know, people from the outside, are like I O not getting big 10 player of the year or, you know, not being number two in the country or, you know, whatever it is, but they're using it. Like jo and Josh, I think knows his team will use this well and it's mature enough to handle this, but I will say, and I've said this before, as someone who thinks conference championships, regular season conference championships should mean more. I'm happy people are passionate about this because if you ask me the measure of true success for a program over the long term is how many conference championships do you have? Like Bill Self has one national championship. He's a heck of a coach. He dominates his conference though, right? Like, and Mark Few, no national championships, but he is dominant in, in his conference. And you know, Bill Self, when he was here at Illinois, dominant in the Big Ten. I think those things matter and should matter more. Because if you look in history, Illinois doesn't win them very often, right? Like the 2000s, that 2000 to 05 or 98 to 05, that's a rarity where Illinois wins a majority of them. Lou Henson won one. So I agree with Whitman that this should matter. And, and people should be passionate about a Big Ten championship. And it shouldn't just be like, ah, Big Ten championships don't matter. No, that's the biggest sample size. That's like the true measure of what you are for a season, more so than a single elimination tournament. Even though I know, just like the NFL playoffs, Joey, you don't measure your Packers by division titles. You, you measure them by Super Bowl titles, right? I understand that. But I still think as a Packers fan, like you should take a lot of pride and care about those division titles, just like Illinois with conference titles. Man, you had to take the jab, didn't you? I get it. It's been, it's been a rough postseason. You win, you win division titles. I want those. I want those as a Bears fan. We don't have I, any. I think this is also, Jeremy, part like I agree with what you said. Like, the, sustained success over the course of the year matters in who your program is. And then you sustain that success over the course of several years, and that matters. And I think some of this is also where Illinois is in its rebuild, right? Like this, 
you win the Big Ten in what has historically been, according to Ken Palm, the hardest conference in 20 years. You do that, and all of a sudden it's like, well, okay, you know, yeah, they can go on a run. They probably will, and, you know, we'll see where it ends up. But this is like, hey, remember that year? Yeah, we went on the run. That was good. And, you know, this was the first of X number of times we've been in the top three or we've won the Big Ten. And that matters. And, and I think it's – I'm not saying I, I think it would have been different if Illinois had done a Kansas and won a thousand of these things in a row. I, I don't know that that's the case. But I think there is part of that where it's like this is a, a chance for Illinois to establish itself as back into what it was. And it – it matters to Brad. It matters to Josh. It matters to the guys. I mean, I thought Jeremy and Derek and I talked about this in Michigan State. I thought it was kind of strange how after that game, it was like, well, you know, uh, you know, we're not going to win. And it's weird because the day before that, it was like, man, it's all here. You know, Jacob Grandison was so passionate and I'm not singling him out, but he, he was so, he gave such a good quote about it. it's all in front of us. And the big 10 was part of that discussion and it, so it does matter to these guys and it's it is hard as heck to win a conference in college basketball it's really hard you've got to be really good for three months to do it and, and illinois is in that position again so is michigan so is michigan the shutdown you know a lot of the shutdown was such a unique experience for michigan in the sense that they didn't have any positives on the basketball team and and, and Again, giving Illinois a co-championship doesn't take that away from Michigan. They're not saying like, hey, sorry, y'all, but you're not getting this. It's just, I, I think so much of this is moment in time and, and the reaction and the meaning behind it and, and kind of where this program wants to be. And I'm not trying to put words in Josh's mouth, but my read on it is yeah. it's kind of all of these factors. Yeah, I, I, I understand Gene Cady's kind of known for not making a Final Four, but he won six Big Ten championships in, like, the toughest Big Ten ever. And I just – I feel like that should be a bigger deal. Like, I, you know, Lou won one. And, you know, Lou made it to a Final Four, unlike Gene. But, like, man, Gene was – a monster uh, in the big 10. So um, yeah, I'm just kind of passionate about that, but like, do you think, you know, this Josh penning that letter, it, you know, makes this a bigger story going to the big 10 tournament and maybe his team responds. Well, I hope for Josh's sake, his team responds well and plays well in the postseason. Cause if they don't, people are going to look back at this and say, you distracted your team. But I, I think his team, and I think he knows it, uh, is, is mature enough. And maybe this helps them puts an even bigger chip on their shoulder. Cause they play well, Joey, when they have a chip on their shoulder, we've talked about it all year. Nobody knows how to, how and when to place that chip. Like Brad Underwood, he's done it. Like he's taught a master class in doing that this year. I, I would have to put money down that Josh and Brad discuss the possibility of it. Like, I don't think Brad had something forwarded to him. Like, Hey dude, did you see this on what? Twitter today? Yeah. The, and, and I'm sure the question was, you think this is going to get in the way of what we're trying to do? And the answer was probably was uh, had to have been, otherwise it wouldn't have happened. No, do that. Do that yeah. right thing. Now. Can I write a line in there. Can I help with this? How, how can I assist you here? That, that, so, yeah, we'll sit now. If they turn in a clunker on Friday, suddenly there, there are going to be very fair questions about if that had, had changed anything. And look, this team, I, I don't, th one, I don't think that's going to happen. Two, if it does happen, a week from that Friday, I don't think this is the conversation again because they're a team that's going to, you know, we just, there's enough body of work. Most of a really good basketball team. But if this is the fuel that this team needs, I don't know that this team needs much more fuel. I mean, Brad finds a way to do everything with that. They're good. Then this works out. And the, you know, the big 10 banner that Josh loosely alluded to hanging in the what state. Say? Most big 10 wins. I guess, right? I, I mean, you can, I, you can raise whatever heck banner you want. The Indianapolis Colts showed that, didn't they? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I guess, yeah, but you know, look, if, if this works out, do you do it or do you just hang final four, right? Like, like if this goes the way uh, that they I, hope it goes, my rallying cry has been go get the Big Ten banner this weekend, right? If you, if you want that Big Ten banner, just go get that one. Then, yeah, go get your final four banner too. Like, you don't need a Big Ten most wins banner. Like, you only need that banner if it doesn't go well in the post. Right. I look, storyline wise, I'm sitting here like Sunday, Illinois, Michigan. Oh. All right. Oh. Like, this is going to be 
awesome. after after Iowa. Come on, bring it. Oh man, what a <laughs> what a weekend. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Get the other ones, and, and then maybe you don't feel like you've got to to hang this Big Ten regular season wins leader, co champion. I, I don't whatever you want to call it. I will say Josh knows how to fire up his base, man. Like the approval rating of Josh Whitman after that letter, whew, through the roof. <laughs> I think it was like a go. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a GoFundMe. People trying to get a statue for this guy somewhere. I mean, they were like, you know, that's my quarterback type of fan base, man. They were all in. My guy. That's my guy. All right, Joe, let's take a quick break and talk about what we planned on talking about before we read that letter. The All Big Ten teams will talk about how you voted. That's next. All right, Joey, I thought Illinois. Um, despite some Twitter upsetness <laughs> over Luca Garza winning Big Ten Player of the Year, which was pretty predictable, Illinois well represented in the All Big Ten awards here. As Io DeSumo and Kofi Coburn are both first teamers, and I was happy to see Kofi on both the coaches and the media. I thought for me he would have been third in my Big Ten Player of the Year vote. So I, I thought that was great for Illinois. Trent Frazier got honorable mention, which I think is a great honor for him uh, to end his career. But more importantly, he got his all defensive team. But even Trent, we're talking about taking like little things and motivating you. He was upset Dor Daryl Morsell, one Big Ten defensive player of the year. So use whatever you got to use as fuel. Uh, but also Andre Curbelo, this might have been the biggest shocker to me, even though he's deserving if you look back on it. I didn't even think of him for sixth man of the year. I thought Shondi Brown would win it. But Curbelo's had bigger games. He had better stats. And I think we know he can take over games, as he showed down the stretch here. And he's also all freshman team. Um, you know, obviously, Juwan Howard wins coach of the year, which I think was pretty predictable. You could have thrown Painter into that discussion. Underwood, though, out of those three coaches, had the highest expectations. I'm sure he was top three for that honor. Uh, but I, I don't know if – I think Curbelo was the biggest shocker for me. But I thought all Illinois well represented and well respected in these honors. Yeah, let's start with Curbelo because I mean, on this podcast, Jeremy, after games, we've talked like, oh boy, what is going on? Like the freshman wall was a very, very big wall. I, I mean, there were times that it was just like, this guy is not helping much right now. He, he's out of control. He's trying to do too much. And then when it changed, it changed. And you're right. Like looking back at the numbers, I'm like, oh shoot. Like were we, I don't want to say too critical, but did we zone in too much after game when he had had some of these performances and, and kind of miss the bigger picture of it? Cause he was, I mean, he's electric and, and I've I said it before and I'll say it again. This dude's going to get a lot of attention in the NCAA tournament, like a ton of attention which is insane because he's a freshman on a team with Iota Sumo and Kofi Coburn. Yeah. But he, he's really that good. So I was a little surprised because I thought Chandi Brown was more consistent throughout the year. But man, when Curbelo is doing Curbelo things, look out. Like this guy is going to lead the Big Ten in assists next year. Yeah. And he was what? He was in the top five, if, if I'm not mistaken, top six this year in the Big Ten. I mean, he's, he's incredible. The, the way he, he really picked it up is a credit to him for – putting the pieces back together after a really tough stretch there. But yeah, that, that was a surprise. Uh, I thought I on Kofi, like it was a slam dunk. That, that was an easy, easy first team. I'm not surprised Kofi wasn't unanimous, but he should have been. He should have. That, that's one where I think he got kind of, you know, Michigan didn't have a player in the first team, which I kind of would have tried to force one if I were voting. And I'll ask you about it here in a second. But like, I think Kofi, because I was the star, just a lot of people said, oh, there's my Illinois guy, first team. I'll put Kofi on the second team. Kofi was, in my opinion, third best player in the conference. Yeah, I mean, I, and I voted as such, but Michigan – so my first team was, was Iowa and Kofi, slam dunks. Lucas is total slam dunk. And I went with Hunter Dickinson because I thought he had a lot of Kofi to his game. And he – like, no one had an answer for this guy most of the year. And he was – <laughs> except for Kofi and he was incredibly good I thought to me like and you and I had talked about this before you know as I was going through and, and making these votes I, I thought I was like yeah duh I, I mean I thought those four were, were really straightforward and then I went with EJ Liddell I, I thought EJ I think he's the biggest matchup problem in the Big Ten and would I say that after I just said you know no one can really stop Kofi or, or Hunter Dickinson but e, EJ's game 
it really ha has taken off and, and blossomed in the way that he's a pick and pop and, and the way that he plays. So I, that was my first team. I thought it was fair. And, I, you know, you could have made the argument for Trace Jackson Davis easily. You could have made the argument for Travion Williams easily. I, I just thought, really, I didn't think there was a lot of room on the first team. I thought the first four, Dickinson included, was like the slam dunk to me. Yeah, for me, I, I, last week I was like Dickinson slam dunk along in my – if I was voting, I would add Kofi, Io, Luca. Liddell would have been my fourth guy. Um, maybe I'm a little biased because I just love watching him. And I think he's such an impactful player. But for me, it was between Trevion Williams and Hunter Dickinson or Franz Wagner. Like, like Wagner's the third leading scorer on his team, but I feel like he's the most impactful overall player at times, but so is Dickinson at times. The livers goes off at times, so it's hard to pick one of those. Trace Jackson Davis, awesome stats, awesome metrics. His team's got to be better, man. Like He's got to impact winning more. And when – they had close games, late in games, and his guard play was not good, so I felt bad for him at times. It's just it's hard for me to put him on the first team, uh, given that his team was just so poor this year. I same thing with Marcus Carr. Marcus Carr was on my third team. Great stats, great talented player, but there was just a lot of empty calories in there. And I, th I felt the same kind of thing with Trace Jackson Davis. Uh, what did you go with your? I mean, Trevion Williams. It felt like Purdue, you got to honor somebody, right? Like what a season they had. Um, so I would have had a hard time between Trevion Williams and probably Hunter Dickinson. That would have been my debate there. Yeah. And I, I mean, I was, you know, again, but it's kind of the same thing. It's like, well, Michigan is, is this good? Like, how do they not have a first teamer? And then that wasn't my breaking point. I just thought Hunter Dickinson was so freaking good all year. Second team was, I mean, to me, Trace Jackson Davis, the numbers. Again, he, he was on first team for, for the media selection. I, I don't, you know, I didn't go that route, but I see how it happened. And I don't necessarily, like, I'm not yelling and screaming about disagreeing with it. And, and then you put Trevion Williams, and I put Cousin Franz on the second team because, like you said, he impacts so much. And then really I put Isaiah Livers, too, because yep. he is, I mean, those three – you know, you almost are like looking at it and it's like, oh, they, they kind of took away from each other a little bit in terms of numerically. But if you watch their impact, I mean, they, they are just incredible. And then Joe Wieskamp. Uh, I mean, awesome. Joe Wieskamp, he does so much. Like, he can light it up so fast. Like, you just wake up and the dude's got 12 points. And he it wouldn't surprise you if he's in the NBA longer than anybody currently in, in the conference. And I think Io is going to be in the league for a long time. I think Franz is going to be in the league for a long time. It would not surprise me if Wieskamp's in there the longest. No, dude, if you can shoot and you're not like a complete and total liability defensively, you're in good shape. You are going to make a lot of money. You're going to hang around the league for a long time. And Joe Wieskamp can do that. And I think uh, to me that made enough sense second team. And really to me that like the first and second teams were like not interchangeable, but it was like. And we're pretty clear in my opinion. Yeah. Like the, the only guy I thought could have threatened that because of the way he ended the season was Aaron Henry. Yeah. Uh, I felt bad putting Aaron Henry, like having him on my third team, but am I putting him above Wieskamp? I mean, if you, if you drafted players, maybe you'd take Henry um, based on the last month, but his team struggled for so long. He wasn't great, but then he just took over. Um, so that's the one guy I wish I could have squeezed on there. Um, who did you have on your third team? Aaron Henry, and I agree with the same thing as you. Like, the reason Michigan State is dancing this year is almost singularly Aaron Henry. Like, that dude has been out of his mind. And then Marcus Carr. Like, dude, the numbers are just insane. Minnesota is a real complete mess right now. But Marcus Carr has been so consistent in filling it up outside of the, the times he's had to hang out with Trent Frazier. But – and then you look Dwayne Washington. I mean, he's – the second best player on Ohio State, and just so consistent in what he does. Except for Aaron, the end of the Illinois game. He missed, what, four or five uh, shots in the last couple of minutes? Yeah, that was a tough order for him. Uh, uh, Trent Frazier, I, I put him on there. Look, maybe a little bit of a homer pick. That's fine. I thought defensively he was so, so good. And he, Can we mention this, though? Because I went through the same thing. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, <laughs> but like, I thought of this last year. I had a vote. And – I wanted to, I thought of, you know, when you're in media, there's dozens of these votes, right? And honorable mention for a player can mean a lot, right, to somebody. And I considered giving one to Andres Felice. I didn't because I just thought, like, it would have left off somebody really good. 
that that simply was better than Andres last year. But like when you're getting down to Demetric Trice or Trent Frazier, like I, I I can't blame you for putting Trent Frazier because that's something he'll have for the rest of his life. And it's one vote. It's not keeping Trice off. It's not keeping Ron Harper off. So I considered that vote last year. And I think I, I think Trent has an even greater case right now than than Andres had last year. To me, it was, it was Ron Harper that he kicked off there because Aaron Wiggins was my other pick on that. I mean, 14 points, 5.8 boards on a Maryland team that's going to dance. You know, they, they were a threat in the Big Ten to, in the sense of like they were going to make life really crappy for somebody, um, you know, moving forward. So, again, I thought the first team was just given that there were three, like, to me, three unanimous selections. I, I don't really know how Kofi wasn't, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, that's pretty close, I think, mostly for what yeah. it what it came out to be. Uh, I thought yeah. it was pretty clear most of the year who the 15, 16 guys were. Uh, honorable mention guys were Frazier, Jordan Bohannon, Eric Ayala, Aaron Wiggins. I, I thought I would have agreed with you. I would have had him on my third team, maybe over Harper, because Harper struggled towards the end of the year. Um, I don't know if I would add Trice on it. Um, so, you know, 15, 17 guys I thought were in the discussion. How did Geo Baker get a vote from coaches? Like, Geo Baker is a, a fine score, but like, he was on like the all Big Ten preseason list. I'm like, he's not even the best player on his team. He averaged 10 points a game last year while Harper's averaging 15. So it's no slight to Geo. I'm just, there's a Geo love fest that I just kind of don't understand. And then I, I hate to call out because these are good college basketball players, but a couple of media voted for. Teddy Allen, who quit his team. <laughs> right. Or decided yeah, to, it was like, hey, this dude dropped 41. I, th- I think a media member simply just looked at the scoring list and put him on. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And then I like him. He's a nice big in the Big Ten. But John Harar, somebody put on their all Big Ten teams because he got honorable mention. Nine points, eight and a half rebounds. Again, I think it was just a media member looking at who's a big man I can put <laughs> and who's that, who's one of the leaders in rebounds. Let's put John Harrar or maybe it was somebody at Penn state. I don't know. You know Jerry, I do wonder like, do people get so hung up in the positions when they vote this? Because I didn't like, dude, I didn't think, I, I don't care. I, I literally didn't think anything about that. Give me the 15 best players in the big 10. I don't care. Dude, my first team, you know, obviously not this year. Cause I, I don't care if it's all centers. I don't care if it's all guards. If you are one of the five best, your first team, and maybe someone's like, oh, I need a center. And, you know, I've already used Kofi and, and Dickinson. And I, as I, you know, move this down, I still don't know how we end up with John Harrar. But, you know, it's, that's fine. It's just, man, mate, look, dude. I'd be maybe, a media member from Penn State just trying to yeah, get maybe well, the same, fine. same line of thinking as Frazier Feliz was like, you know, it was a good year. And, and when you see every game, you see all the little things. And, you know, we do, we see all the little things with Trent Frazier, like his stats. And I'm a fan of Ferrar. Like you throw him right. out there, man. He's a big boy. He's physical. Is it kind of a throwback? I like him. Yeah, I it, <laughs> I get it. But move. Yeah, you do kind of raise an eyebrow. I get that way more than Teddy Allen. Well, it bothers me. Like last year, the NBA still does the two guards, two forwards in the center. For all NBA. How does Nikola Jokic not get first team last year? Or, or this year, like Anthony Davis, or I guess he's not playing a lot, but like, you know what I mean? Like you could have two of the best three players in the NBA are centers and one of them doesn't get on like Embiid or Jokic. You got to pick one of those, one of those guys isn't going to be first team or this year. Like that, that's nuts. That's an old school way of thinking about it. I think the AP does that. And that's why Kofi got second team for the AP, which I can't disagree with. Like Garza, I'd take Garza right yeah. <laughs> this year, but like positions shouldn't matter. You just honor the five best players. Yeah, and it's changed, right? Like, there's so, I, yeah, I, I agree. That's probably how. And if you had to pick one or the other, Luca or Kofi, I mean, dude, come on, you're taking Luca. I don't care. I just don't care. You're taking Luca. I would love to see the vote split with media and coaches for Big Ten Player of the Year. I wonder how close it actually was. Uh, I wonder how much IO missing games mattered. Um, listen, I think if you are an Illinois fan, and you want to vote Io? You have a winning argument. Um, I, I like that he plays, you know, better defense defense than than Garza, and I think a lot of it with Io is anecdotal to go along with really strong numbers, right? And I think any year that you know any other year, Io probably wins Big Ten Player of the Year. Maybe yeah, the man. Evan Turner year he doesn't. Maybe the Frank Kaminsky year he doesn't. But most of the last decade, 
he wins. Um, but Luca Garza is a, a generational talent, the best player to ever play at Iowa. And he had a phenomenal senior year to back up all the hype. And if, if you believe in metrics, which I usually do, um, the offensive metrics, especially for Luca Garza, are as good as it gets in, in college basketball. Wind shares, offensive efficiency, all, all those different things. But if you want to make the anecdotal argument for Io, you know, the way he plays on defense, you know, the, the impact he makes closing out games, the fact that his team has more wins, all that, that's a winning argument too. He's a facilitator too. I went with Io and, and it was tough, like, because Luca has had a ridiculous year. I mean, he, he is an incredible basketball player, but I, I went with more of the anecdotal, like the assists. I, I think he facilitates so well and gets Illinois into doing so much of what Illinois wants to do. I think defensively, he's better than Luca Garza at what he's asked to do on defense. You look at the way he rebounds for a guard and the way that he's had those moments. And I thought like, yeah, maybe this is a bad take. I don't know. I mean, again, I Luca won and like the other part of me is like, yeah, of course Luca won because that was a very, very logical play. Um, so to me, it was like, how are you going to you know, line those two up? And then I wonder like, what is it going to be nationally? Like, could we have a big 10 player of the year who isn't the national player of the year? Like, I, I, I think Luca dominates the national. I, I think, I think he does better nationally than he would uh, regionally just because, you know, I mean, to his credit, they're a top five team in the country, right? Like if you had Iowa have that February swoon, right? And maybe they're 20th in the country. I think Iowa's got a lot more support. And if Iowa doesn't get hurt, but with Iowa being top five in the country and, and Luca being a huge reason for that, I mean, his recent stretch of games here is ridiculous. Like the numbers he puts up there, we're just like used to. Um, it, it's ridiculous what they've done. I do wonder like if Iowa got hurt in December, say. And like before this conversation was like being screamed from the rooftops and he plays the closing stretch of the season. And again, Illinois was three and zero without the guy. So it's not like this, like his absence cratered, but like there were moments set up for Iowa, like go in, Iowa beats Michigan, right. Or, you know, go in, Iowa beats Wisconsin again. And again, Illinois won. So like that narrative is kind of harder to imagine right now, but I do wonder if he wouldn't have gotten hurt. Cause like, dude, that was a loud conversation before he got hurt like yeah. it was an incredibly loud conversation and then I had a look Luca in the time I missed went absolutely berserk and, and played continued to play really really well because that's what Luca Garza does I just I, I do wonder what it would have been like and, and it maybe wouldn't have changed I'm not sitting here saying like you know it changed because Io got clubbed at Michigan State and, and missed three games but I do wonder, I think that's a fair thing, a natural thing to wonder. And look, the reality, no, probably wouldn't. Like Luca, to his credit, man, this guy came in, everyone's like national player of the year, that guy right there. And he did not miss a beat at all. Like, he delivered to everything everybody thought he was going to do, which is just to me as impressive as like the other stuff that Io did to live up to that. Like everyone's like this, everything everyone said about him, he did. And that is, so incredibly impressive. Yeah, and I tweeted this out. Like every time you argue for Io, it feels like you're sliding Luca. And I, I don't like the Illini fans to say, "Oh, Luca is isn't that good." No, he yeah, is. Get out of here with that. he's he's really good. Or oh, Michigan's a fraud. No, they're really good. They're 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 really good. They they deserve a Big Ten championship. Uh, but it does tell you like these things matter again, Joey. Like and think of the arguments you're having: National Player of the Year, Big Ten championship. And think of the bad blood we got going into a week where Illinois could play both those teams yet again. Um, there's a lot of fodder here, but uh, I, I'm ready to get back into basketball games. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. We had so many in so few days with this controversy stuff. I'm just ready to get back to basketball games. And boy, they're going to be the most meaningful basketball games. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. I mean, again, like I, I just thought about this, Jeremy this morning, like two years ago, the last time Illinois played in a Big Ten tournament, obviously because of COVID, like going into it, it was like, well, this is going to be the last stop. And they're not getting out of Chicago in the Big Ten tournament at all. They beat Northwestern and there was a little bit of like, could this help? You know, the, is this a team? And then they, they get blown out by Iowa. Is that a good Alan Griffin game? Like that was kind of like a weird, I, I want to go back. Yeah, I need to go back to that one. I, need to look at it. I think it went to overtime, if I'm not mistaken. 
and it was like that late like midnight Wednesday game <laughs> like it was something ridiculous but you know it, how much has changed in those two years and within that change are these conversations about coach of the year player of the year big 10 champions like it two years ago as we were leaving the united center if we like if someone one of us would have been like hey man in two years i'm at, I'd be like, hey, i'm not saying it right now i just don't that's a that's a very high thing to reach and it was hard to see at that moment so much has changed it was not an Alan Griffin game. He had zero points that game. It was a Georgie game. Georgie had 26 points on 15 field goal attempts. Trent had 21. I only had eight, uh, but Felice 11 off the bench in that one as well. I mean, Georgie's freshman year, man. It's just like, what, what the hell did this come from? Unbelievable. Man, he was so good. Like, <laughs> I, when I think of his freshman year, of course, I think of the Nebraska game and just how, like, I do, I, and again, a lot of like his freshman year, we really diverted off the path here, but like a lot of his freshman year. Freshman scoring record. <laughs> yeah. And like, no one really knew who the guy was, right? Like he comes in, it's like, that guy's a pretty fun guy. But like, and no after that night him. at Northwestern, you're like, that's, that's our number two guy, right? Like that, that's, that's the second building block we have. And now he's like the seventh player on the team. Yeah. And you know, he's adapted to that well. And, Let's say, though, it wasn't the most smooth adaptation. Like, it was kind of rocky last year when they were kind of shoehorned that lineup into something that they wanted to do. But, yeah, cut it to him. Anyway, two years ago, Big Ten tournament, wouldn't have seen this coming. Like, not even close. And, you know, with with that, when a team is back to this, it's been so long since a team in Champaign, football, at least in the two revenue, football or basketball, has been to a point where it's like, People feel like they deserve to like an award for the season. Yeah. It's, it comes with the territory and credit to Brad and the players for getting it back to this point where you and I can sit here and be like, Oh my gosh, the conversations are still going and it's still happening. Yeah. There's this conversation going on too. And I, I, I found myself thinking like, are fans enjoying this enough? Like, are, are they true? Like, so you want to, you, I, I, I want to be dad here. And, and I, I sometimes have dad takes like, Hey, enjoy, enjoy the process. Don't get too caught up in this other stuff. Right. Like enjoy the journey of what's happening. And I think most people are right. I, 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 I don't want to be that guy. That's like, Oh, you need to enjoy that. I don't want to be that guy. Um, but I think, and I've had this hypothesis before, and I've talked with my guy, Austin Berkland, who's, who's a very fanboy right now, and he's enjoying it, but he also wants like this season, like he wants it to be remembered like 05. And I think, I think the one thing about this team is it's almost a shame that the last good team, like great team was 05 because 05 was one of the, most recognizable college basketball teams, right? Like they were undefeated for most of the year. This team wasn't, most teams aren't right. Like most teams, even the great championship teams are not followed like that team. They're not remembered like that team. Um, so I feel like there's a burden with this team that like everything needs to be perfect. We need to win every award. We need every national media member to have us number one or to, to win the national championship you are one of the stories of college basketball. I would assume it was one of these stars going into this tournament. Kofi Coburn, and Andre Corbello are going to get their due as long as Illinois takes care of business, right? Like Illinois is number three in the country. And they're one of the best teams. And it just happens that Michigan was really good too. You didn't get a share of the Big Ten title, which stinks. But like, this is still going to be remembered as long as they don't slip up, I think, before the Elite Eight this is still one of the greatest teams of all time. And I think for a generation of Illinois fans, this is the first great team they've, they've watched. And for other fans, it might not be 05 caliber quite yet. It might not be 89, but there were some other really good teams too. 2001 was a heck of an Illinois basketball team. Um, you know, Bill Self won several Big Ten titles. Like you're back to that. Like you're, you're back to that. And that means you matter on the national stage and you do matter. Like people are taking notice and people are recognizing it. And I think the all big 10 honors certainly showed that joy. Yeah, man. What a great comparison to like looking at, like, again, like that's been such like the, the lore for a, a generation of fan. And look, Jim, if we're going to be honest, a generation of fan base that is active on social media, like that's where we hear a lot of this. We don't see a lot of people in person and like, 
that's a generation that's there and it, it does like it's a big I don't know that the team thinks much about it but like we we've certainly been in there where player people have been asked about hey did you follow the 05 team and, and they probably I, I don't know how much they think about I was four years old yeah like they're smart guys they're basketball guys like they're not like in this bubble like oh five what, what, what do we think happened there like they know but th- that is such an interesting comparison to look to and look i also think come friday like people are still going to be like especially sunday if, if what we think happens on sunday is going to happen on sunday then it's going to hit again but like i think come friday people are going to be like all right here we go like the rest of it's over like all that is behind us and the the, the arguments whatever that's done I, I just think there needs to be games like it's been a while since there haven't been games and look there's a part of me that thinks like the fan base is uncomfortable with being comfortable right you, you got to find a way to get this chip on your shoulder that like we're not respected yet and and I, maybe that's what feeds this team it certainly does seem to feed this team um but i get it after 15 years of not having relevance all of a sudden you get relevance, but you feel like ah, we still need more attention. You're going to get it, man. You're, you're going to get it. Like Seth Davis or Jeff Goodman will put out their top 25 and Illinois would be like four or five. And look, most of the time you could have made a rational argument to move them up higher than that. But oh my God, like, does it matter? I go through them. Like every now and again, I'll click back. Let's, let's see like a million responses. I'm like, wonder what's going on here. And like 500,000 of them are like Illinois fans. Like why? why they're passionate, are we- man. They're passionate. And we, we love yeah, them. Yeah. It's not a knock, but yeah, there, there might be a level of like, we want more because the last time they had more to your point was 05. And 05, like when the team, and it's the other angle of it, Jeremy, like it's good that people are drawing this line between because like people love that 05 team so much. It's nice that they can find that same feeling again with another team. But I think the last time Illinois was like this, they were number one in everything. Like yeah. it was all over like Illinois, Illinois, Illinois. And now people feel like, I think they feel like this team is very, it's, you know, th- this is the same feeling here in, in our fandom bubble in, in this area as that 05 team why are you not seeing that? And I, I think maybe that's part of it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to knock them good, man. It's, 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 that, it's that Gonzaga's undefeated. And I know they're in the West Coast Conference. It's that Baylor has lived up to being number two. It's that Michigan is way better than any of us thought. And, you know, they are deserving Big Ten, at least co-champions, if you believe that. And then Iowa is really interesting with the national player view, right, in, in the middle of it, one of the best you know, college basketball players ever, most you know, productive college basketball players ever. So it's just, it's not, it's not, it's a rarity to have one team kind of dominate college basketball for an entire right. season. And, and the last so, time was 05 and people like, they want to see that nationally. And then I'm looking at this. I'm like, if I'm Houston, I am ticked. Like no one's talking about me. No one at all is talking about me. And they're up in the, the highest metrics in Ken Palm. Like if you want to fight a fan base, that's like, Hey, we're still here. Go to Houston, man. Oil of Chicago right now. Like that huge fan base. <laughs> yeah. Look, nine like, in ten pound. Why are we a nine seed in the tournament? Man, have fun with it. That's what this is. It should be fun. And, and again, the last time it was like this was 05. And, and that's what some people had gotten used to with that level of attention. And it just because it'd been 15 years since it had been like that doesn't make this any less special. And again, Friday, come Friday, it's all all hands on deck. I, I think because social media is the only way we interact with people too. Like even us, like most of the feedback we get tends to be negative, even though like yesterday I put the poll out there just to kind of get that feedback of, you know, are you happy with, with the big 10 honors and 60% were like thrilled, right? And 20% were like, again, yeah, whatever. And it was just 20% that were like, Oh, we had disrespected. Right. But um, we hear more from that 20%. So I, I will always want to make sure like, that's not always reality uh, of what we get feedback on social media. It's just the only feedback uh, we kind of get right now. Joey, what I can take away from this is, man, it's old school. Nothing uh, gets more reaction than a strongly worded letter. Oh, Jeremy. Uh- <laughs> old school way of doing things, man. Yeah. I mean, it is. That's a good point because like, so it's 2021. What would have happened if Josh would have like been sitting in a Zoom room or something and, and recorded a video? 
Like, would it have had the same? No, no, man. Like you could dive into every single word. Because he, you know, he put a lot of thought into every right. single word. Like if you want, if I watch a video, like you're listening, but it's like, some things you're kind of like, it just happens that they don't fully digest. Like you can take your time on every word. Yeah. Strongly written letter, man. You nailed it. Like that's it. Good call. Cause even like Brad, like with some of the arguments, like, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, what, what are you really saying? Which is why a couple of weeks ago I asked him like, what exactly is your issue? Whitman made it clear what his issue was with that strongly worded letter. All right, Joe, we always go along, man, but it was always good conversation. Big 10 tournament starts tonight uh, in Illinois for, man, the first time in a long time is not playing in the first. Usually I go to the Big Ten tournament and never see my guy, Graham Couch, because Michigan State doesn't arrive until f- Friday and I'm gone by then. Uh, that certainly won't be the case this time. Uh, Joey, thank you, as always, man. All right, man. That's it.